Ready to face the music? The A-10 Thunderbolt II. This is an aircraft that first flew in 1972 and is still in service today, meaning it's been flying for over 50 years. Over 700 have been built and they've become an icon for close air support for the United States military. A-10s are one of the most loved aircraft flown in America. Hollywood loves the aircraft too. It's featured in a number of video games and big budget movies and has taken on more strange enemies than any other aircraft. It's been in combat against Nazis flying UFOs, Resident Evil bosses, Decepticons, and Kryptonians just to name a few. Hollywood has much love for the A-10 and the Pentagon has been known to use this to their advantage. The A-10 is one of their best recruiting tools. In Transformers, for example, they paid many of the real Army and Air Force extras and provided real A-10s. In Terminator Salvation, actress Moon Bloodgood pilots an A-10, with the Pentagon lending one of their female A-10 pilots to help with the production. Good recruiting techniques for certain. But let's take a look at the real history and use of this aircraft and has always featured the movies and video games where it turns up. The A-10 is commonly and affectionately referred to as the Warthog, or just the Hog. Okay, send the Hogs over to Killbox 1 Alpha, it's a danger to switch the Hogs to Killbox 1 Alpha, 300 feet danger. Its Thunderbolt moniker is inspired by one of the most loved and rugged aircraft of World War II, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, which has its own both beautiful and ugly appearance. The P-47 proved to be one of the best ground support aircraft of World War II. The A-10 entered United States Air Force Service in 1976, and unlike the P-47, it was built only for close air support. It may also act in the role of forward air controller airborne, used to direct other aircraft in attacks on ground targets. At the start of the Vietnam War, ground forces were relying on aircraft like the Korean War era Douglas A-1 Sky Raider for close air support an excellent aircraft in its day, with a large payload capacity and long loiter time. But it was a slow propeller-driven aircraft, and many were lost to ground fire out of the 266 lost in action in Vietnam. Peter, bail out! Peter, bail out! Other aircraft, like the F-4 Phantom, would take on the fighter-bomber role in Vietnam, but this aircraft was expensive to buy and operate, had no loiter time, and poor low speed performance. That was power. I need speed to maintain control. Avoiding the stall. The Air Force looked at a number of low cost ground support aircraft, but struggled to find the right design during the early Vietnam War era. Helicopter gunships were proving their worth in Vietnam, highlighting an underdeveloped doctrine in U.S. air power, which was focused on speed and nuclear capability. The AX program started in 1966 was to develop a dedicated close air support all-weather aircraft, which would fill the void in America's capabilities to specifically target Soviet armored forces. The aircraft would be specifically designed around the 30mm cannon, have an external load of 16,000 pounds, and be cost-effective at 1.4 million a plane, or around 10 million in today's dollars. While competition went out for the aircraft's design, a separate competition went out for the rotary cannon. General Electric and Philco Ford were selected to build and test the GAU-8 cannon prototypes. The first production A-10 flew in October of 1975, and deliveries commenced in March of 1976. The A-10 would meet and exceed many of its requirements. It has superior maneuverability at low speeds and altitude, due to its large wing area and large ailerons. The wings also allow for short takeoffs and landings, allowing it to take off from primitive forward airfields near front lines. The A-10 has good low-speed loitering capability, meaning it could better target small, slow-moving targets versus fast fighter bombers. When performing close air support, the Warthog has a combat radius of 288 miles and can loiter over a battlefield for nearly two hours under a 5,000-foot ceiling. It's also capable of in-air refueling. The A-10 was designed for easy servicing at forward air bases with limited resources, one reason why it still flies today. For example, the skin of the aircraft is not load-bearing, therefore easily fixed and replaced. 
An unusual feature is that many of the aircraft's parts are interchangeable between the left and right sides, including the engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. The landing gear is robust for a heavy bomb load, with large tires. All landing gear retracts forward. If hydraulic power is lost, a combination of gravity and aerodynamic drag can lower and lock the gear in place. The A-10 is built to be tough. I'm okay. I'm okay. Are you? No. Sir? The design of the A-10 allows it to survive from direct hits from armor piercing and high explosive projectiles up to 23 millimeters. It has double redundant hydraulic flight systems and a mechanical system as backup if hydraulics are lost. The aircraft is designed to be able to fly with one engine, half of the tail, one elevator, and half of a wing missing. The cockpit and parts of the flight control system are protected by 1,200 pounds of titanium aircraft armor, referred to as a bathtub. Armor makes up about 6% of the aircraft's empty weight. The engine placement further increases survivability by decreasing ingestion risk and allows for the engines to run while the aircraft is being serviced and rearmed by ground crews, reducing turnaround time. The engine's high 6 to 1 bypass ratio contributes to a relatively small infrared signature, and their position directs exhaust over the tailplanes further shielding it from detection by infrared homing surface-to-air missiles. Of course, it can operate very close to enemy positions and has been an easy target for surface-to-air missiles. As such, it carries both flares and chaff. Defense aside, the 30 by 173 mm GAU-8 Avenger Auto Cannon is what the A-10 historically is all about. It fires depleted uranium armor-piercing shells at a rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. The gun is accurate enough to place 80% of its shots within a 40-foot diameter circle from 4,000 feet while in flight. The gun's almost 6-foot ammunition drum can hold up to 1,350 rounds of 30mm ammunition. Of course, given the A-10's payload capacity, it can carry a number of more advanced munitions, from rocket pods to GPS and laser-guided bombs. The A-10 has seen many upgrades in the past 20 years, with advanced computers, digital displays, and sensor pods. The A-10 can be equipped to detect different types of platforms launching missiles, automatically jam enemy signals, and run countermeasure programs which will automatically dispense flares and chaff at preset intervals. The A-10 can share its sensor data with personnel on the ground. A-10s were first deployed for combat in 1983 during the American invasion of Grenada providing cover for U.S. Marine Corps landings, but they did not fire their weapons due to lack of resistance. In the Gulf War of 1991, 132 A-10s were deployed. They scored their first air-to-air -air victory shooting down two Iraqi helicopters with the GAU-8 cannon. Four A-10s were shot down during the war by surface-to-air missiles, and 11 A-10s were hit by anti-air artillery rounds. A-10s flew 8,100 sorties during the Gulf War against Republican Guard forces. This included hunting Iraqi mobile missile platforms. Shortly after the Gulf War, the Air Force abandoned the idea of replacing the A-10 with a close air support version of the F-16. A-10s flew again in the Bosnian War in 1994-95, and again in the Balkans region during the Kosovo War in 1999. In the 21st century, A-10s returned to Iraq and fought the Taliban in Afghanistan, again frequently using their cannon. The A-10 also flew 32 missions in which the aircraft dropped propaganda leaflets over Iraq. A-10s flew 32% of all combat sorties in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. The sorties ranged up to 34,500 annually between 2009 and 2012. In the first half of 2013, they flew 11,189 sorties in Afghanistan. The A-10 does have a tragic record for friendly fire, having been involved in killing 10 U.S. troops over four incidents between 2001 and 2015 and 35 Afghan civilians from 2010 to 2015. The A-10 has more friendly fire incidents than any other current U.S. military aircraft flying, no doubt inspiring the fictional scene in Jarhead. Incoming! 
Incidents include killing a Canadian soldier while wounding dozens more in September of 2006 in Afghanistan. In 2003, during the invasion of Iraq, two A-10s fired on and destroyed two British armoured vehicles, killing one British soldier and wounding five others. Uniquely, there is public cockpit video and audio of the incident. The U.S. military deems the friendly fire issues not a reflection of the aircraft, rather a comprehensive issue, which includes training and communication. The A-10's replacement is still up for debate. Its cannon is still relative against many targets, but it's definitely taking a backseat to guided long-range munitions, as sophisticated anti-aircraft weaponry continues to get cheaper and more prolific. The F-35 is one option to replace the A-10 if its cost continues to decrease. Drones have also been discussed as a replacement for the A-10. The prevalence of guided munitions allows for more aircraft to perform close air support missions and reduces the requirement for specialized aircraft. Since 2001, multi-role aircraft and bombers have performed 80% of these missions. There is further an argument for combating low-tech enemies with even cheaper aircraft such as the Super Tucano, which are obviously less exciting, but more cost-effective. Currently, it's hard to say when the Air Force will officially retire the A-10. There are certainly many interesting fictional ideas and concepts about its future. It's still well-liked for its versatile payload and psychological effect both against enemy forces and for friendly troops on the ground, not to mention its use as a recruitment tool. Target destroyed. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this little video on the hog. Remember, go ugly early, have a nice day, and we'll see you in the next one.